Good morning, community. At least it's morning where I am. Maybe maybe it's late afternoon or evening for you. Uh, if that's the case, uh, good evening to you. Uh, but it's morning for me, and this is uh, day two back from an extended PTO. I had a, a chance to get away for a good 10 days, and it was fantastic. Because uh, sometimes, I don't know how you are with, with taking vacations, but it takes me a good three, four, five days to separate myself from the the work. And so if I'm walking away, I might still be thinking about work and checking into doing work. And of course, the team's probably like, Jason, you never really went away. That's true a little bit, but but on vacation, it takes a little bit of time to separate myself from the responsibility of work. So having an extended time gives me time to then ease into, okay, I'm not on and I can really just relax and, and enjoy myself. And so it was nice. I went down to Florida, to the beach. I missed a SpaceX launch by two days. I was so upset. Um, so we didn't get to see the SpaceX launch, uh, but you know, we'll, we'll, we'll make it to Florida at some point when there's an actual launch happening at Cape Canaveral. Uh, but that didn't happen this time, but we, we, we did some uh, waterfalls. Uh, we hiked down to a waterfall and got to swim in the collecting pool with the kids. And it was in the middle of like nowhere, Tennessee. And so it wasn't a tourist trap or anything. There, there are a couple other families there and it was, just really peaceful. That was nice. And then we hit Nashville on the way home for a week. And that was fantastic. We got to do a lot of cool things. The kids got some studio time and they got to sing and work with an audio engineer. And, and that was, uh, it was a lot of fun for me as a dad, just watching your kids do what they love uh, was, was cool. And uh, I did not participate in the singing, uh, which I think everybody was thankful for, but, uh, all right, so we got some uh, comments already. Pascal, uh, 412, curious what's next. Jason, well, thank you. I appreciate that. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm, you're far more legendary than I am if you have already accomplished your 401 and, and 402. So uh, good on you there. And Alex, hello, afternoon. So he's, uh, uh, you know, in the uh, far later than I am. Um, I haven't eaten breakfast yet, uh, although that's my fault. It's 1030. I should have eaten breakfast. I haven't even had water yet today. And I was like sitting here. I'm like, oh man, I should have gotten a glass of water. So I normally jump up and drink a glass of water right away. But anyway, back from vacation. And normally I would have partners in crime, uh, Boo and Aubrey and Peter here with me today. But uh, that is not the case today because they are on their way to Black Hat. Uh, I think some of them are in the air, in fact, right now. Uh, Peter, I think, drove uh, to Vegas. He's out in California and, and uh, you know, crossed the desert and, uh, you know, hung out with some cacti and, and some scorpions, I'm sure. And uh, but anyway, I wanted to play a quick uh, promo for uh, the work that they're going to be doing at Black Hat and, uh, you know, look forward to some content this week. If you uh, have not subscribed and turned on your notification bell, do that because as much content was blazing out at, at uh, RSA. It, it's going to come fast and furious here uh, with Black Hat this week as well. So you'll want to make sure you don't miss that. And uh, so anyway, here are the guys. We'll be back at Black Hat. It's been so long. I'm glad to be back. Yes, we're hitting the road again. Boo Lamb and I had such a great time at RSA that we're bringing Aubrey King into the mix. We'll be in Las Vegas to capture some video at Black Hat 2022 August 10th and 11th at Mandalay Bay with the rest of F5. Come by booth 2140 and get your selfie with the Dev Central hosts and maybe even appear on camera with them. If you'll be at Black Hat August 10th and 11th, come by F5 booth 2140, get a t-shirt and some special Dev Central trinkets. Always bet on Dev Central. All right. So look forward to that. That's going to be a blast. I, I love the enthusiasm and excitement and, and really the one I'm most looking forward to because I have uh, a Oculus Quest uh, virtual reality um, headset is the walkthrough that they'll do of the trade show floor. Uh, when they did that at RSA, it's like I'm, I'm still kind of new to virtual reality. So the, the, the honeymoon phase of that technology has not worn off. And, uh, and so it's, it's just really exciting to... Uh, just like feels like you're there. And I know that's the point of virtual reality, but 
you know, I, I first did virtual reality. Let me see. It was before I was even married. So it was like 1992, 1993. And it was the very, very early stage where you put this gigantic headset on and, uh, and you had little triangular and rectangular polygons wrapped around something, but there was no, no artist, not artistry or anything. It was, it was really clunky and, uh, and ridiculous really for the like $10 you paid for three minutes of that. But, uh, you know, to, to be as um, uh, in, uh, influential as it is now and, and really just brings you into the experience. I, I love that. So I look forward, Boo uh, and, uh, and, and Peter and Aubrey, if you're watching this, I, I expect next level of this one uh, to really blow my mind. So, you know, you have your, your work cut out for you. Um, we have uh, uh, a few more comments in here. Uh, Aditya, uh, hello, good morning. So he's also morning. Uh, and then uh, we got a good evening uh, from Dia uh, from Lebanon. All right. And uh, of course, Karen's checking in from the Pacific Northwest. And uh, Pascal, Peter can't sing as well. Um, hold on, my, my phone is going off. It's not normally doing that um, at this time. I apologize for that. Um, and uh, I'll also apologize in advance. Um, our AC went out this weekend and, uh, it was like 93, 94 in the house yesterday, ridiculously hot. And, uh, the only time that AC people could come is like literally like possibly during the show, it's like a nine to 12 window. And, uh, I was, uh, um, talking with my, my guest, who's going to come on here a few minutes right before the show. It's like, yeah, literally I'm, I'm going to say hello. And then HVAC guy's going to be walking down the stairs, which are right in front of me. And I'm going to go deer in the headlights and it's going to be crazy. So if if I if I look like I'm extremely distracted at some point, um, I'm just distracted by somebody walking down the stairs to take care of our thing. So, uh, but I'll, I'll try not to make that an issue. Uh, lots of all right. Good evening from Nepal. Wow, Nepal. My my daughter was in Nepal several years ago for a semester, and so uh, she she was actually there during the uh, the big the last big earthquake um, in Kathmandu, um, and uh, and so. That was a that was a crazy semester for her, and uh, uh, we got the good morning from Chicago, just you know a five hour drive up north from me, uh, Venezuela. Wow, we're all over the world, and uh, and of course from Scott, uh, Victoria, BC, and so lots of lots of spread around the globe. I love that. I love that that uh, technology like this can bring people from all over the world together. Anywho, we have a great show and. Uh, you know, certification is something that, uh, you know, I have personally appreciated throughout my career. It's been uh, beneficial to me personally uh, in, in different jobs. It's not always beneficial in a particular job as far as getting a job, uh, but going through the effort of learning and, and maximizing your skill base in a particular area, I think is always a good thing, even if it doesn't necessarily benefit you with pay or, 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 or job opportunity from just the personal benefit of, of going through the effort. In fact, I'm, I'm going to, I'm pursuing the, uh, the certified, uh, Kubernetes administrator certification right now. And, you know, in my role, it doesn't really, you know, I, I don't need it, uh, to stay employed or anything like that, but I do want to know more of the nitty gritty details of that. And so I'm, I'm pursuing it. And so, you know, F5 certifications are, are no different. And the program has gone through, um, a, a lot of tremendous, uh, development over the years. And, uh, and so uh, I'm going to bring on uh, Miss Heidi Schreifels uh, to talk about it. Heidi, how are you? I'm doing well, thanks. Good morning. Good morning. Now you are a friend of the show. You've been on a few times and, but it's been a while. And I, I think the last time you were on was the follow-up show I did to the psychometrician on the core May that show rest in peace. Um, and uh, uh, on, on my, my solo show that I did. But hey, this is a solo show today because all the team is out. So I get to play. There and, you go. Uh, and here you are again. So uh, anyway, um, for those who, who may not know you, may not have been around for those shows, um, you know, how did you get into tech? Sure. Um, oh, goodness. <laughs> Uh, well, let's see. Um, I studied communication at Washington State University um, and had a variety of jobs kind of after that. Ended up at Nordstrom 
Um, and if anyone's ever curious, that's a, a, a very lovely retail store that started in Seattle and it's nationwide. Um, and if anyone wants to have a chat about this later, I actually manage Santa's Castle at one point in Nordstrom. That is a story in and of itself where all the kids come in and get their photos taken with Santa quite the experience. Um, so there I made the logical leap to Microsoft. <laughs> Not logical at all. Uh, <laughs> no connection whatsoever. But yeah, I, uh, I, I decided that, um, you know, living in the Northwest, um, really tech was kind of a, a, a great opportunity to grow and develop my own skills, um, utilize my communication background, that kind of thing. So I um, ended up um, at a marketing firm where I uh, was in uh, customer evidence, which is truly where you get customers to say nice things about you, either to the press or to analysts, other customers and a reference framework. Um, and that's what led me to F5. We had an opening, an opportunity here about 15 years ago um, that was on our PR team. Um, did that job for a while, loved it, got to meet some great people and worked a lot with uh, Ken Salco, who most of you are familiar with. Um, by the way, he's in Hawaii right now, so we're not feeling the least bit sorry for him. He's on a much needed vacation and hopefully enjoying it and applying sunscreen. Um, anyway, so uh, he, he, he had just spun up a certification program at F5 and said, oh boy, I need somebody to help develop the exams. Um, looked around asked me what I was interested in. And I said, sure, I've never done it before. I think I'd be perfect for it. Um, <laughs> it's So it's been a lot of fun. Um, learned a lot along the way. I loved seeing the names that came in from the hellos this morning. A few of them I have worked with before in the capacity of developing FI certifications. So it's great to see you all again. I wish that we could connect in person soon. Um, yeah, so and, and, and just seeing every, all the different cities and countries and theaters represented. I mean, it's such a reflection of our certification program and leads very nicely into kind of why we're talking today and how, how we're evolving our, our program and the development of our certification exams. So thanks for having me. I'm super happy to be here. Well, I'm super happy to have you. And before we get into important stuff, I got to know, did your Santa at Nordstrom sit on a throne of lies? <laughs> um, well, this is not exactly a claim to fame, but I may be, I may have fired Santa. <laughs> <laughs> we had a few, there were some very lovely, lovely, lovely Santas, but um, there were some uh, issues. If anyone has seen Bad Santa, I'm not recommending it, but, um, or read uh, David Sedaris Holidays on Ice, that I can <laughs> recommend. Um, you'll know that Santas uh, have a lot of personalities um, some are definitely uh, more appropriate for um, the public and some are not. So uh, yeah, I had to fire a Santa. Wow. I guess you were on the naughty list there for a little while. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> oh, wouldn't be so, the first time. <laughs> yeah. So coming back, some coming back to the certification program, uh, you know, the winds of change are upon us. Right. Um, but, you know, kind of before we talk about the change, if we step back and look at the program as a whole, um, behind the scenes, why why is it important for FI to have certifications from your perspective, and what what do you hope to accomplish by by having them? Yeah. Um. So, gosh, this actually goes back to really one of the reasons that um, I got on this journey with Ken and decided that this was a place that I wanted to be. Um, the way that he positioned it was. F5, we're going to create a certification program. I was like, great, what does that look like? And he said, well, our primary focus, the reason that we are going to do this is for our candidates. It's to um, help them develop professionally, maybe personally, help them have more success in their career development and, and what they want to achieve. Um, Ken was a, a collector of certifications. He has a lot of them and they absolutely changed his life and presented opportunities to him professionally that he could probably not have otherwise had. So when he said that, when he said, we're doing this for the candidates, F5 will sponsor it. It will absolutely you know, be for F5. Um, we benefit from it. It gives us a different differentiating point in the market and it helps us um, you know, increase our reach with our products and solutions and people who can manage, deploy and install all of that. 
But even more than that, and the the overriding importance was how can we help other people in that space do better in their lives? And and we we used to joke that like, you know, we want to see more zeros at the end of their <laughs> paycheck to the left of the decimal point. So, you know, and, and we we truly do measure our success by our candidate success. So when they're doing well, when they're getting new jobs, new opportunities, changing careers, um, we that's awesome. We love hearing that. So for any of those of you who are out there and have those stories, please share them with us because we get super excited about it. Um, so yeah, it was really about the candidate and how we can um, improve just improve their situations and create opportunities that are meaningful to them. Um, our entire focus in doing the certification program, Ken and I joke that we facilitate everything and Karen's on the call too. She's a, a very important part of our team. We facilitate the, the exams and the certifications being developed and the program design and all of those things. But what gets developed is developed by our subject matter experts. And you all have heard me refer to them as my engine nerds, and I love them dearly. But the the, the candidates, the subject matter experts, the people who achieve our certifications, um, you know, if we're going to be doing this for them, we need them to tell us what would help them, what would benefit them, what makes sense for a a, a a meaningful certification. It's not just a paper check mark. It's actually something that you know, is worth achieving, is probably hard to achieve, but absolutely stands out if they are applying for a job or they are, you know, looking to advance their career, that it it has meaning to it and it, it matters to them and brings value to them. So working with our SMEs, it's absolutely the most important thing that I do on a daily basis. Yeah, that's great. And we, we got a great comment. And, and absolutely, if you guys have stories about how the certifications have helped you, or something that you've gleaned from the certifications that maybe was outside of the purview of your day to day, uh, but you were, you know, kind of blown away by something that that uh, it, you know added value for you personally. Drop that in the comments. We'd, we'd love to hear that. And uh, uh, but Pascal says if you put the badge on your LinkedIn profile, the inbox will explode with leads <laughs> and stuff. In particularly the 301B. No joke. That was not an easy test. Uh, so you guys uh, did a superb job. It holds such a huge value in the industry. Awesome. That's great to hear. Thank you. Yeah. The well, it was developed, B, it was developed by the, the, the SMEs who are on this call. Like that's, that's the cool part. Our community, the Dev Central community and the F5 certified community is very much closely aligned and a lot of the same people. So well done. I would say back at you. Congratulations. That was an awesome exam. Yeah. I, I love that exam. Cause I mean, that's the is, 301B is the troubleshooting one, right? It is. Yeah. yeah. And the, the yeah. feedback we get is that if um, like if you're in uh, if you're in support, the 301B is easy for some people. Um, 301A is a lot harder. And then on the flip side, like if you're in a consultant or you're deploying or implementing things, 301A, because it's what you do every day, seems to be a bit easier. Um, yeah. So, yeah, it's, it's always yeah, the, that feedback. The biggest thing with the 301B, I think, was just time. It wasn't necessarily that you couldn't think through the things. It was just that, Hey, when you're troubleshooting and, and I had a professor in college is like, Hey, um, I, you can sit there and troubleshoot all day, but you're not going to get paid to, you know, pull out your calculator. And, you know, like, it's like, this is not a theory class. This is a, you're on the clock and people need solutions and they need them now. And so it's like, we're wa working our way through circuit boards. And he's like, Hey, you need to know generally you're not designing the board. You're just troubleshooting the board. Yep. So it's like learning to work quickly with the information that you have. And that test certainly, uh, you know, requires thinking quickly and, uh, yeah. So. Identifying the problem within the, within the scenario. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Uh, we got a couple uh, more questions here uh, from Varun. Uh, I would like to see more opportunities for the 304 achieve certification, but not as, not as many opportunities in India for APM. Um, and then, uh, uh, Aditya, uh, F5 helped me make twice the salary. Nice. Good job. Yay, that's Love awesome. to hear that. Yeah. Yep. Very good vibes. <laughs> yep. All right. Well, wanted, and, uh, uh, that question that came up before about opportunities for a APM, is that, um, is it to help contribute to the exam or that there are just, maybe there isn't as much business APM business within that region of, of the world that they live in? 
Yeah, weigh in on that, Varun. I, I think that uh, the latter, maybe there's just not a whole lot of business yeah. opportunities uh, for that one. Might have. Um, but uh, yeah, we have another question here. Started an F5 technology two years ago, focusing on LTM, uh, and carry grade, uh, NAT, and AFM. Be taking the F5 101 towards ends. Any changes uh, that could affect me for the 101? Okay, so um, what I would recommend is going in and looking at the exam blueprint, look at the 101 blueprint. And, and I will absolutely tell you right now that um, it, it's, uh, it's a little bit older. However, everything is still relevant. Like look at the blueprint, highlight what you know, circle what you don't know, do some follow-up, do some, join our LinkedIn group. Gosh, there are some very helpful people on there um, who will help in a way that will help you learn it. Um, and uh, uh, not, you know, obviously not give away any of the answers or anything like that. Um, but one of the other things I want to mention is, um, you know, our certification exams prior to COVID, we were developing them in person and bringing in groups of people and refreshing as we could, as best we could do with our limited resources. Well, when, when the pandemic hit, we were not able to travel, you know, safety, health, all of those reasons that were very important, um, really brought everything back sort of in-house. And so we looked at our program, how could we evolve? How could we change? What would best benefit our candidates? What can we do to adapt and just, you know, really still accommodate and not knowing when we were going to be able to get together again um, and, and develop those exams. So we started to explore you know, our options and, um, which is cool, which is why we're here. We are going to, um, we're, we're, we're changing to, um, a, a development method that will allow our subject matter experts to, um, write items on an app at the luxury convenience comfort of their home or at work if they have a break. Um, so this way we can not only utilize our entire global subject matter, expert, you know, community. Um, we're not limited to just one exam at a time. We're not limited to just the 15 people that we used to be able to bring into Seattle and then at a remote location outside of the U.S. Um, so we can, I mean, it's it's unlimited, the number of subject matter experts who can contribute to our exams and to the certification program development. So um, where some other technology programs uh, unfortunately decided to just go ahead and put their effort into publishing everything online. And now two years later, we're seeing that most of those exams that the other organizations published have been, you know, exposed and they are of no more value to anyone. Um, we decided to not make that move very conscientiously decided let's not put them out online. This is not going to be a, they're not designed that way. But let's look at how we can redesign the program to open it up to a bigger group of, of our, our SMEs to um, create some new exams and new certifications that could provide more value to our candidates. Um, just to really, you know, unprecedented times for sure. But this may be the trend where, you know, it's not necessarily a, a tragedy that happens that makes us change how we do things and adapt, but it is now kind of an opportunity for us to explore really innovative ways to to engage with our community in a much broader, deeper way and utilize that wisdom of the crowd, which we know is there. I mean, just the group that's on this call alone, I can guarantee you that knowledge that they all have is extraordinary. And so being able to tap into that and, um, and, and hear from them and have them write items for the questions that we can then develop these really, really, um, really quality, high quality, um, lots of value uh, certifications and exams for our candidates. That's, that is where we are shifting our, our, have shifted our attention to and are currently actively doing. Yeah, I think that's fantastic because you know, even as uh, you know, a technologist who's who's on the Dev Central team, I I get access to technology, um, in, and I can think through things. But I'm not operationally responsible for designing anything, maintaining anything, troubleshooting anything, retiring anything. And so there's a little bit of rust that forms in roles like mine. Uh, whereas people who are in the trenches on a daily basis, they they know. But the things that are critical to understand uh, in a technology to be able to, uh, you know, deploy well, 
as well as uh, troubleshoot well and yeah. and you know bring that mean time to resolution down and so they really have the best eyes in building questions that are going to shape that and you know uh, from a from a standpoint of writing questions i did want to ask um yeah. we had a psychometrician on uh the show that I missed back in December of, was it 20? Yeah. December of 2020, uh, got COVID, went to the hospital. It was sad. Uh, yeah. I didn't get to be on that show. Um, but, uh, but the, the whole prep for that was so fascinating to me on the work that goes into building questions. Well, yeah. uh, how to write them, not just write them for the technology, but even things like, uh, thinking about how people who don't speak English, uh, engage with questions and, and how, uh, the phraseology of uh, uh, a sentence that I might write might completely change the uh, the focus of the question uh, for yeah. somebody who's in, in, engaging with that question uh, as a second language. And so uh, with uh, kind of opening the floodgates to people to write questions, uh, you know, how how are you guys setting up uh, to to help and assist with, uh, you know, writing questions well, uh, writing answers well, and then, you know, from there. Yeah. So great question. And you, one of the things that you mentioned too is, is technology and how quickly it evolves and it changes. This new methodology will really let us uh, be able to, to keep up pace with that better because again, we're not restricted by our limitations with resources and budget. We can open this up to anyone really at any time and allow lots of different exams to be developed um, simultaneously. Um, so how do we maintain the uh, security and the quality and the uh, just all of those things and the, the accuracy of item writing when we're not doing it in person? This was a concern that I had. And it was a, 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 a it's a big one. And um, we what <laughs> my first response is, well, we'll ask the people, the subject matter experts who've already done it. By the way, that's a little bit of a recruitment um, PSA there. So if, if you want to help, let me know, because I'd love to have your help. Um, but those those subject matter experts and we have a lot of them who've been through the training. Also, um, a lot of you who have taken our certification exams are familiar with our format, our structure, our cadence. Um, I During these uh, uh, exam development sessions, I will always say, keep the questions as simple as you can. Our technology is hard enough as it is. Let's not make it a challenge for the candidate to understand the question. It's about the technology that we wanna test. Do they know it or they do they not know it? Um, so we, uh, in this new process that we're doing, we provide there is a, a training, there's um, a really cool process in the, the vendor that we're using, um, it's an app, they're called Certiverse. And um, they, so it's sort of a follow the bouncing ball. Like you, you start and it walks you through the process with online tutorials. Um, there are certain rules or best practices within item writing. Like for example, you would not wanna use the word no or not one, it changes the entire meaning if somebody skips over that word. And studies, research, tons of research have shown that a lot of people, when it's a time constraint or when they're gathering the information that they believe they need, won't see that word. It's a small word. It gets skipped over. Well, when you remove that word, no or not, from a question, it changes it entirely and the answers are no longer relevant. And it's not a great way to test somebody's, you know, knowledge, skills, or abilities at all. So if say a subject matter expert is in writing an item and they use the word not, this tool will actually guide you to change how you write it so that it's in a positive rather than a negative, um, avoiding the whole no and not um, situation. So there, there are a lot of resources that we have made available. Um, we have created a LinkedIn group for certification development. So if anyone wants to join that, please let me know. Happy to extend that invite to you where we'll provide more resources, rules, examples. 
Um, Jason, you talked earlier about the time constraints on some of our exams, for sure, that's a big factor. So having um, sentences, having questions that are structured in a way that's easily recognized for our candidates to say, okay, I've got it, I know exactly what they're asking me and go right to it, um, rather than it being a creative writing activity. We wanna keep it very simple, straightforward. English as a second language, you know, we wanna be very sensitive to that and make sure that we are communicating clearly what we're testing them on. So the the app will allow for that. Plus we're again, providing additional resources and are going to do some um, like online training sessions for anyone who's who's interested. And I'm available if anyone has any questions or needs some, some guidance. Yeah, oh, that's awesome. Uh, we got some questions uh, uh, in the, in the chat. Want to get to questions and comments. Uh, Daniel Wolf, Daniel. Hello. Welcome. Uh, recommend yeah. the practice exams to everyone. They will give you a really good idea of the way questions are written and what your gaps are uh, for sure. Yep. Um, and and so what the, I'll say to, oh, go ahead. I was going to say the practice exams are developed at the same time that the scored exams are, and they are on par. They were, they are equal. So while the, there are no shared questions between the scored exams and the practice exams, the content, the information, the type of question, they are absolutely equal to the scored version of the exam. And while passing the practice exam doesn't guarantee you'll pra you'll pass the scored exam, it is a great indicator. It's also a great resource to prepare and like he said, fill in the gaps for what you still need to know more about. Yeah, for sure. I, I wish I'd have had that on the, is the, <laughs> the DNS one, the 302? Yeah. Yeah. Your practice the, the 302. Yeah. yeah the, oh, the yeah, that is. Yeah. The 302 kicked my tail. That was, that was. <laughs> You're a good company. <laughs> yeah. Again, it's like I'm not operational anymore. So when I took that test, it's like I've I've been out of the DNS game for years. And so going in, it's like, oh, man, I, I don't I don't remember bind, let alone uh, the. So there's a lot of study as I was going through blueprint and then the the, the practice exam. Nice. Um, uh, when are these new changes going into effect? Uh, uh, looking for yeah. a time frame. Uh, Great. So we're actually right in the middle of um, this is exciting news. We are developing the first ever F5 Nginx certification. So we decided, um, you know, again, the last couple of years, how can we best serve our candidate community? And um, Nginx is a huge opportunity for us, for our candidates. There isn't anything out there in the market to certify, you know, on that uh, on on that technology, those solutions. So we are we are running a pilot program. Um, we have developed uh, certification exams blueprints. Um, we are also actually in right now, um, there are item writers, question writers, actively writing questions. So if anyone is interested in doing this, please let me know. Like I, that this is why we're here is to reach out to our candidates, to our subject matter experts, to anyone who really is interested in this to invite you. And I will find a spot for you. If you're if you're more suited for our big IP technology, I can absolutely help you get started writing items for those questions as we refresh them. Um, but the Nginx one is where our, our primary focus is right now. Um, it's a baseline Nginx uh, certification and it's it's going well, we're making progress. You know, we're learning a lot also. And, um, but it's, yeah, it's, it's pretty cool how it's working out. Yeah, that, that's cool. Uh, Nate, Nathan, how are you? Been a while. Hey. Yeah. Uh, comment here. F5 certs helped me transition from network security engineer to an F5 consultant many years back. Uh, even helped uh, develop the 401. So uh, that's tremendous. Uh, yeah. Thank good you. Good job on that. Yeah. That was not an easy one. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, from uh, MN Dad, is that Minnesota? I'm guessing. Uh, Dad in Minnesota. Uh, and I love that uh, the icon is that uh, did you turn it on and turn it off again or turn it off and turn it on again from uh, the IT crowd? It's a little small, so I can't really tell, but it looks like uh, Chris O'Dowd. Love that show. It's so good. But any plans to put out an official study guide uh, for the 303 and the 304? Great, great question. And and I will say that um, historically and traditionally, all of our study guides have been created by our candidates. Um, we, as a, as a group, and again, F5 certified, we're a small team, really, truly, Ken, Karen, Lydia, me, we, we do a lot with, um, with a, f a few people on our team and a, a very large community 
that helps contribute. And, 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 and we love that because you're helping each other and that really does foster that community and you're building each other up, supporting each other, networking together. Um, and, uh, so our, our study guides have been authored by candidates who, uh, saw a need for them or they needed to prepare themselves for the, the exams. Um, so I would, I would encourage joining the LinkedIn group. I know I, I keep suggesting that, but it really is such a great resource for other candidates who've been through this, who can help um, the study guides. You know, if, if anyone is interested in developing them, we can provide kind of the guidance and also some of the uh, rules that would probably would need to be followed with that. So it's not encroaching on any sort of security or exposure to the exams. Um, but as far as the certif certification team within F5, um, we are we are not going to be creating study guides, but that doesn't mean we we don't encourage them. We had them um, that were that were created, and they became outdated. And rather than putting outdated false information out there for people to study and prepare with, we had to pull them down. So um, I would say your best bet: study the blueprint, join that LinkedIn group, um, and and you know get some get some help there for sure. All right. Uh, Jonathan, 303 helped me get a better job and 401 to get a promotion in his previous job. So congrats. That's awesome. I love these stories. And I just love seeing all the faces that I spent a lot of time in a room with these fine folks. It was it was so much fun. Yeah. Uh, Aditya, every time I watch Dev Central live session, it feels like it's not just a company sharing its knowledge. It's like family expanding knowledge to the universe. Uh, you know, not a nicer thing could be said because that's that's what we're that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to you know bring in information and value, uh, but it really is about fostering community. This is a, you know we want to be able to connect and uh, and ex extend family, and and so because you know like I've been on the Dev Central team for in October will be 14 years, and you know people have come and gone on the team. People have come and gone on F5, but it's always felt like family to me. We've always been a tight knit group on the Dev Central team. We've always had great partners within F5, uh, like the certification team and uh, and other groups. And so it it is it is like family. It's a it's a great environment at F5, um, and that's just a reminder. We have a ton of jobs open if you want to come join us in this uh, amazing experiment that we have uh, at, at F5. Uh, but also just in the in the Dev Central community itself all the people that that give of their time to come and help each other uh it's 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 beautiful love it this is you know having lived in the northwest and been around other technology companies i would say that the culture within f5 and i'm including our partners our customers our employees you know that it really is about helping each other out lifting each other up sharing knowledge i loved when we would come into these workshop sessions for certification and, you know, the first day people are kind of like sussing everyone out and figuring out what, where, you know, and, and the knowledge levels. And, and then by the end of the week, they're just like arguing in the best possible way about that their question is right. And then somebody over here says, no, it's wrong. And here's why. And there's that instant of, oh, and then it's the embrace the new knowledge. Like they, they, you know, and, and, and it creates this, this respect and this, um, I don't know. It's just, a, it's a very unique culture that I really like. And that's, that's one of the reasons I, I continue to want to stay and build what we're do, building at F5, um, that yeah. community for sure. Me too. Yeah. I love it here. And I, I love the people I get to work with. I love the community that I get to serve. So it's, yeah. uh, it's beautiful. Uh, Scott, uh, weighing in here, F5 certification has been huge. Lucky enough to be an item development workshop with Heidi in Seattle a number of years ago. So that's awesome. Yeah. Hey Scott, uh, just so you know, my nephew's back at RPI. He's playing hockey again, so he he's so happy about it. <laughs> we awesome. have some little, little inside I baseball, a... <laughs> I guess inside hockey. There. Inside hockey. <laughs> yep. And also another comment from Scott uh, gave him a friend in Philip Johnson did a bunch of work on his book uh, with Steve Ison. So uh, worked up to three hundred one B. Plan more in the future. Yeah, I when I did my certification, we were doing it as a journey to to write about it on Dev Central. And I made it through uh, the 301 A and B and the 302. And my plan was to get through 301 or 303 and 304 to take 401. So I only had to recertify 401. Yeah. And I just, yeah, I, I got busy and then and then it got too close. And it's like, uh, maybe I should just go commando it and, and take them all and not study 
I'm not like, ah, oh, that's going to be a waste of money because I'll probably fail. So, <laughs> oh, but you know what? Um, it's, I mean, it's it's worth a shot, and it's always it's always fun to hear those stories. And I think people maybe underestimate how much they really do know, um, and where they can pull that those memories and that information from. I'm I am astounded by our candidates, by our subject matter experts, by all the people I get to work with, and just how how smart they are. I I laugh that I have all of the questions on all of the exams and I couldn't pass one to save my life. Yeah, seriously. So y'all are a um, smart bunch. <laughs> okay, this is awesome. Somebody somebody went and, and registered. <laughs> Just <laughs> that is so cool. Oh, that is great. Thank you. Okay, so this really quick story. When we were at a doing a development workshop, um, one of our one of our facilitators would joke. Uh, he was not an F five employee. He worked for a different vendor, and he would always say, "Okay, if I can figure out the answer, then it's not at the right level because I'm clearly not the person who should be sitting for this exam." And somebody used he used the term because we were developing the four hundred one exam, and he used the term security hobo. Well, of course, one of our item writers who was in that workshop spun up a quick Twitter account of that. And then it just went wildfire around the group. And um, they were some super, super inside nerdy security jokes that, I mean, I, I appreciated them, but the group got them. Um, so well done, my friend. That was, that was nice. And I hope you weren't a fired Santa because yeah, talk, talk to me later. We'll share what happened. There you go. All right. We, we're well over. I've oh. taken a lot of your time, Heidi. I mean, this is this awesome. This great. is this is really great community. I love seeing all the engagement today. Uh, one real question before then we kind of wrap up and, uh, and and give, you know, call to action real quick to the community. Can you increase the validity of certification to three years instead of two? What are the challenges with that? Uh, challenges with that is that, you know, the technology, as, as we're looking at updating these certifications more quickly, we can stay close, more closely aligned with how the technology evolves. Three years from a psychometric position, and this could be a whole nother conversation, you know, Jason, we've talked about this, but psychometrically, it, it starts to fall off. The validity of the, the knowledge can start to fall off. So um, what we did, though, is we extended the validity, the grace period of your certification. So if, 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 if you had one and it was set to expire kind of over the last couple of years, um, we did extend it through the end of December this year. So my recommendation is schedule now and get those refreshed so that you don't lose them. Um, but there, there is a, there is absolutely a science behind why a two year valid certification for our industry, um, really, really makes sense. And you know, with F5, like ours is just, we just test. We don't have at, at right now continuing education or extension or things like that. Um, and, and I, you know, I will absolutely take that as feedback. We will look at it and, and, and um, we can consider it. Um, but as of, as of today, we're, we're sticking with the two year based on data and research that's been provided that, that, that really is the most appropriate time frame. Yeah. So I, hey, Jason, I believe before... it based on all the, the crazy uh, analytics that we looked at with uh, Jill, uh, I totally yeah. believe it that that's been looked at and yeah. analyzed uh, to death. <laughs> yeah. Any what decision you that you question, like if you have a question about a decision or why something was done, there is data and research and we, we do not make arbitrary decisions about things like how many questions are on exam, how long ex each exam is, how many uh correct answers, incorrect answers, all of those things, all of those things that go into making up a, a valid certification exam. We have research, we have data that helps us support why we should make those decisions. Um, it's certainly not decided by Ken and me and, and the rest of the team. Um, what I wanted to mention, or you're probably going to, is the, the video that uh, I recorded with Boo a few weeks ago. Um, I just want to make sure that that gets mentioned because it goes into a lot more detail about um, how to 
sign up for doing item writing and participating in exam development in this new way that we're doing it. So I would love to hear from all of you. Um, you can email me directly. That's cool. Um, but that we did do, record a video that talks about the onboarding process. Um, and, and it's, it, it was, it was fun to make and it, there's a lot of really great information in there. Yeah. And, uh, so we'll have an article on dev central as well, uh, either later today or tomorrow. And we'll link that. No, we'll actually embed that in the article, but it'll also be released shortly after the show, or maybe it's already been released. I'll, I'll have to talk to Peter about that, but uh, okay. it'll be on the YouTube channel here very shortly. So uh, a yeah. full interview there. And uh, yeah, all the details will be linked there. It'll be linked in uh, the dev central article. So, uh, you know, awesome. I'm really excited about the uh, ability for everybody to get in there, add yeah. questions and, and write Especially and contribute. Those those folks who already know how <laughs> I'm going right. to come knocking on your door. <laughs> right. And uh, we got, we still got war stories going on here, you know, uh, just cool pool. Uh, 301 uh, is brutal. And Daniel's like uh, gave doom scrolling a new meaning, the the tiny screen and the huge oh, TCP dumps. Definitely. Yeah. yeah. It's like you go into those test centers and you got like a 15 inch screen and, and uh, you're sliding windows back and forth and you're like, I, I can't see it all. Yeah. So, yeah. I know. Yep. We, we have, yeah, that's a that's a whole nother session about how to design for um, really not optimal. I mean, yeah, uh, devices yeah. at a testing center. It's a challenge. Yeah. And Karen is in the background going, oh, yes, I agreed. <laughs> that's that's her, her area of uh, focus. Yeah. All right. Well, before we wrap uh, and anything you'd like to, you know, share with our tremendous uh, group today. Uh, this is about, uh, you know, where we've talked about where to best connect with, with the team. Uh, and so any, any parting thoughts before we close? Just, I just wanted to say thank you. It's always fun to do these sessions and i um, glad you're here. Glad you're healthy uh, and seeing the names that, that come up as part of this group. Um, just, you know, it's, it's a lot of fun. It's, I, I love connecting with people and, 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 and learning more about them. And so, for everyone that I've met and had a chance to get to know, it's been a pleasure. Also, um, we're looking forward to more in-person events, like hopefully agility. I don't have an, I have zero information about that's if that's going to happen or not, but, um, you know, the, your certification team will be there and we want to support your efforts and, and just please come connect with us. Um, that's, 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 this is why I know Jason, this is why we do this is, build that community and just to connect with other folks. So thank you all for your time. Yeah, for sure. And uh, yeah, if we do get to do agility in person again, it's not just for the certification and hanging out together. We get Ken's karaoke bar. Oh, right? goodness. Sure. So it's going to get crazy up in there. That's right. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. and if it, when we all do get back together, I, I commit, I will do a song and uh, <gasps> yes. I can't, I can't say it's going to be amazing for anybody. My sons would have to, my sons and my daughters would, would have to sing for it to be amazing. But, uh, but I'll, I'll, uh, you know, they can be your backup I'll entertain people. the crowd for sure. <laughs> Perfect. You all heard it here. There you yeah. go. Awesome. Yep. All right. Heidi, thank you so much for, for thank joining you. me yeah, today. Great. Okay. Yep. All right. Well, wow. That was fantastic. Loved, loved, loved uh, seeing you guys today. And uh, are, am I taking song requests? Um, well, I'll, I'll send you my keys and the like eight and a half notes I can actually sing that sound good. Uh, so I, I always tell my kids and, and everybody else like, well, yeah, okay. I sang in college. I was on a, a touring group. We sang, uh, but it was, I, I have a choir voice. I do not have a solo voice. So it's like, if you want me to sing background vocals or harmonies, as long as you teach me the harmonies, because I don't sing them naturally. Uh, you know, I can, I can carry a tune in a very narrow window of, of, uh, frequencies. So, uh, as long as you stay in that range, maybe like a smash mouth or, uh, you know, something like Garth Brooks range on, you know, except for when he goes crazy high and low, you know, I can, I can do that kind of stuff, but, um, yeah, so I, I guess I'll take a few, you, you give me a few and I'll pick one. So, um, but anyway, uh, well, I had some news of the day. I'm going to post that in the in the thread on, on Dev Central in the Dev Central community group. Uh, again, uh, if you're not a member of uh, Dev Central Community F5.com, come join us out there. We post show notes and and all that over there. And uh, thank you so much for joining today. Uh, don't forget, we have Black Hat content coming at you uh, fast and furious this week. And so, you know, make sure you subscribe. 
enable your notification bell. And uh, we'll see you back here otherwise uh, next Tuesday, 8.30 a.m. Pacific. Thank you so much, everyone. Take care.